what is up what is up it's ken from brothers and beer um i don't know if you watched steve's video or not but he made a video i think two or three days ago where he did a review of a beer and talked about a topic that he was i guess you could say passionate about well today it's my turn to review a beer and uh discuss the topic so let's get into it um the beer I'm reviewing is Bell's Arabicadabra Coffee Milk Stout. It's a pretty cool label. Uh, it looks really wicked with the uh, with the green screen behind me. Um, as you can see, this video is a little different than Steve's. Uh, I'm doing a little testing for um, whether or not we decide to do the podcast on Twitch. And for when we do other YouTube videos, we're going to do a little testing with possibly using the green screen. So thought I'd give it a shot, see how it looks on the video. Um, let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below somewhere. Um, let me know what you think of the green screen. Let me know what you think of the, let me know what you think of the scene. And uh, decided to throw a little opening in there. Uh, I think I'm going to try and get one made that is a little bit more professional. But let's get into this beer. It's a coffee milk stout. On the back of it, it says, A little brewer's magic transformed locally roasted arabica beans and a variety of specialty malts into a creamy intense coffee stout enjoy before it disappears um, it's 5.5 percent alcohol by volume <clears throat> shelf life of six months that's cool you don't see that on bottles a whole lot and uh, it doesn't really say what the uh, ibu is so being a stout it's going to be dark it's definitely dark um, stouts in general are going to have that coffee flavor but since this is a coffee stout, of course it's going to have a coffee flavor. Smells like coffee. You can really smell the roasted barley in it. Um, it's definitely got the dark color that you expect in a stout. Um, unfortunately, it's sat here and gotten a little bit warm, so you're not going to have quite as much head. Um, but you can tell what little bit of head is on there is a, is a tan color. It's definitely got the stout, the, the smell that you expect from a stout, the roasted, the roasted malts, the roasted barleys, the coffee smells coming through really strong on this. I mean, Arabica beans are a really strong coffee bean, so let's give her a taste. That's a solid coffee stout. I am personally a big fan of coffee stouts. I've actually got one in my fermentation chamber right now from brewing it last Sunday. I'll be adding some cold brew coffee to it in about three or four days. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Um, immediately the coffee hits you. You can you can taste that coffee right up front. Um, there is a slight bitterness to it, which you don't typically get out of a coffee stout. So I'm not sure if they, I'm not sure how they added the uh, Arabica beans. Let me see if it's set on the back of the can. Locally roasted Arabica beans. There is a slight a slight bitterness from it. It's got a very good stout mouthfeel. Kind of sticks to your, your palate a little bit. It's not super thin, but it's also not real thick like a porter would... Or, well, I guess porters aren't really thick, but doesn't have that same feeling as a porter. Overall, it's a really good beer. <clears throat> I have had this beer before. I've never reviewed it, and we haven't done it on the podcast, though. Um, but Bell's is a great brewery. They're out of Michigan. Uh, they make all kinds of really good stuff. They have a beer that only releases once uh, once every year around March time frame. It's called Bell's Hop Slam. Super, super, like, dank, I would call it. Uh, honey Double IPA, and it's it's really good. The more you drink this, the less bitter it is. The coffee notes come through really strong, though, and I love that with a coffee stout. Uh, being that it is a milk stout, it's got a little bit more sweetness, a little bit more mouthfeel. You can you can kind of pick up on the lactose that's in it. That's a solid beer. I'd drink again. 
so off to the topic I want to discuss. So, um, I'm at work the other day, and when I click on Internet Explorer, because we have to use Internet Explorer to get to our intranet, MSNBC pops up first all the time. And uh, I see this thing on MSNBC that says, Congressmen must now use their own money to pay for sexual harassment cases. And I went, huh? Meaning they didn't before? So let me, let me show you something here. I just pulled this up on ABC News. So this is on ABC News. This was written on December 12th, which was two days ago. Congress reaches deal ending taxpayer-funded sexual harassment settlements. After a year rocked by the hashtag MeToo movement and months of negotiations, Congress is on the verge of reforming its own sexual harassment regulations. Excuse me. House and Senate negotiators reached an agreement Wednesday to overhaul congressional regulations governing sexual harassment, clearing the way for a vote on the mature for a vote on the mature, sorry, vote on the measure in both chambers over the next two weeks before Congress adjourns for the year. Under the terms of the compromise announced Wednesday, members of Congress would be held personally, li personally liable for sexual harassment and retali retaliation settlements, requiring them to reimburse the Treasury. It would also publicly identify members of Congress settle harassment claims along with any settlements. What? So you're telling me these assholes that run the country were using my money and your money, the taxpayer dollar, to pay for their own sexual harassment settlements. Meaning, these guys and girls, gals, women, men, whatever, that sit on Congress and make laws pertaining to how we are handled when it comes to the judicial system, when it comes to, oh, I don't know, let's say sexual harassment. When they're charged with sexual harassment and they're found to owe a settlement of some sort, we were paying that? That pisses me off. It's shit like this that you all need to pay attention to. These people had R's next to their name. These people had D's next to their name. This isn't a d Democrat thing. This isn't a Republican thing. This is all of them. While you're all out there arguing about which Democrat did this and which Republican did this and who's got control of this and who's got control of that, they were using your money to pay people to be quiet over the dumb shit that they did. Or they were using your money to come to a settlement with somebody instead of going to prison or going to jail instead of losing their jobs I guess there is one good thing that came out of the hashtag me too movement it's this now don't get me wrong there's a lot of things that are good about the hashtag me, me too movement a lot of it's gone way too far but I can say that this right here this story that you are seeing in front of you is 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 mind-blowing to me so i'm glad that the hashtag me too movement brought somehow some way brought some thought into the congress and now they have to pay their own damn money to pay for their settlements when they decide to play grab ass with their secretary it's shit like this that just drives me insane I just, I don't get it. I don't understand how we continue to put people in office that are only going to do things for themselves. They don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about me. They only care about themselves. That's very evident. I could talk about this all night long. I could complain about Congress and I could complain about how everybody's paying attention to the wrong things. But we don't have time for that. We're trying to keep these videos short. So with that said, look up this article, take a look at it, read it. Make your own mind up about it. I don't, I don't know how you can come to any other conclusion. Make your own mind up about it. If you've somehow found your way to this video and you haven't been listening to our podcast, please go do so. Uh, you can find us on buzzsprout.com. 
Search Brothers and Beer Podcast on Google. If you have iTunes, it'll pop up, number one. If you do go listen to us on any site that you do, you can find us on Stitcher, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes. If you have an Amazon Echo, just tell Amazon Echo to play Brothers and Beer Podcast. Um, like I said, iTunes. Any of the locations that you do find us to listen to us, please rate us, please subscribe to us, please you know do whatever you can, review us. Uh, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. Um, hit the little bell that pops up so you get notified when we make new videos. We're going to try and do this once a week. Um, our fourth beer for the podcast is always going to be on video. And then Steve and I each are going to have a little um, beer review and rant each week as well. We're going to call it our vlog. Um, new to this, bear with me. Uh, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Remember, Brothers and Beer Podcast, check us out. Thanks, guys.